Y'all, this is your man Fonte holding it down from North Carolina, and this is the UrbanDaily.com. Started, and we first got that hip hop quote from the source, man. I just didn't think, like, it just didn't seem real to me. You know what I'm saying? It was just something that didn't seem real to me. It was just like, damn. You know, I just remember, like, getting the call. I think it was ninth that called me, or maybe our manager, maybe Dora called me somebody. They was like, yo, you got hip hop quote. I was like, word. And so I went and bought the source and looked at it. I was just like, damn. And, um, you know, it's just something that, you know, it's, it was just a very, um, a very proud moment for me because you grow up, I had grown up reading the source and looking at the hip hop quotables, looking at, you know, who it got it and, you know, reading the verses, rapping the verses as I read the lyrics and stuff. So to think that there would possibly be another kid doing that same thing to my verses, it really was, uh, it really was a very humbling moment, so um, I was, you know, I was overjoyed, man. I'm about to get hyped with this, shed some light to this, so-called black righteousness. The coffee shop scene in the yo-yo, um, that was inspired by a, um, by a moment. I, I, for a while, I just had a little gig. I was hosting, um, like a poetry night at, uh, at the spot in Durham, and the spot is no longer even, um, existing, but, um, I was just hosting a poetry night and, you know, it was just really, I was just being me, you know what I'm saying? I'm on the mic, I'm, I'm cussing, I'm talking like shit, you know, I'm, just, I'm just having fun and the audience is having fun or whatever. So afterwards, you know, so I got paid, got my money, next day the, the, the owners of the, uh, that ran the, the spot, uh, which I'm still cool with to this day, but they were just like, yeah, I think we're going to go with another host, some of our patrons. And, they didn't really like the language you were using, y'all. That thought you were a little too this, too that. And I was just like, man, get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, ain't we grown? Like, ain't we can't we really just talk it how we want to talk and shit, you know? So that was kind of the the uh, the inspiration for that verse on the yo yo. Just kind of seeing the hypocrisy of that scene, you know what I'm saying? And just seeing how you know a lot of it just is based on a lot of just pretentiousness and just a lot of you know, just cats doing what they feel like they're supposed to be doing versus just being themselves. And so, you know, I would have more respect for, you know, at the time before a rapper like Trick Daddy, you know what I'm saying? And some of these, you know, conscious motherfuckers that, you know, tell me about the dangers of eating pork while they be smoking every goddamn ounce of weed they get their hands on. I'm like, dog, you doing it backwards, you know, bro? Like, <laughs> shit, I I ain't never smoked weed or cigarettes. I'll never touch that shit. So, folks, I ain't gonna kill me. Get the hell off. So, that was where that came from. Well, in terms of with Little Brother, you know what I'm saying, the, the thing that we always, you know, why we kind of ran away from the conscious tag was just because, you know, I just always kind of thought conscious was an empty title. Like, no one can really tell you what that means. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, I mean, what does conscious mean? And the big kind of flaw that I saw in it was that people always define conscious by what you weren't as opposed to what you are. And that's very flawed. It's like just because I don't rap about guns or I don't rap about pimping or I don't rap about selling dope, just because I don't rap about those things doesn't necessarily make me a better choice for your children to listen to versus some of the cats that do rap about that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just like, it's almost like the, the, the analogy I use is like, people say you're a vegetarian, and it's like, you can say you're a vegetarian, and people automatically think, oh, you're healthy, but you can eat goddamn Starburst and popcorn all day and call yourself a vegetarian, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit don't necessarily make you a healthier eater. Just because you're not eating meat doesn't mean you're living a healthy lifestyle. Feel me? So with rap is the same thing. Just because you're not rapping about guns, dope pimping, that don't mean that you're a good rapper or that you're a more positive rapper. You feel me? So that was why the whole conscious rap thing, we just kind of kind of just wanted to keep ourselves out of because that didn't really represent the full scope of who we were. So um, with as far as just our subject matter, we just always tried to write from an honest perspective because for me, I realized that there were more people who could relate to, you know, having to pay with multiple credit cards at, for their dinner than it was niggas that can relate to, you know, Maybach, Maybach music, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or whatever. And that's, you know, that's on this to Rick Ross, because I mean, that's a jam, but I'm just saying, you know, there's, 
there's more people on that side of the economic fence than there is the other side. Right, right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It ain't it ain't Bentley, Benz or Bentley. It's Nissan, Honda, you know what I'm saying? Chevy, whatever. So so for me, man, um, you know, why I think it maybe didn't translate to a mass level, um, most people, man, they just really just want music for their fantasy. Like they really just use music as something to escape. And they wanted to just, um, you know, to take them away, particularly in hip hop. I mean, they just, you know, music is, is not really, in hip hop, it's not really about selling music as much as it is about you're selling a lifestyle. And the little brother lifestyle is very much a blue collar ethos kind of thing, you know what I mean? So um, it's, it's just very hard to a generation that, it's just used to seeing all these larger than life images and I'm popping bottles and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Um, just our just very blue collar down to earth uh, working man's thing. I don't think a generation, you know, that just, just want to pop champagne, I don't think they really, really want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? They respected us because they heard it and they were like, okay, them niggas can rap. But you know, we got the respect, but we didn't really get the love. You know what I'm saying?